Okay, so Ireland Active Fitness Day is happening on September 24th, and it's going to see people across the country getting involved in a host of free activities in leisure centres, in gyms, you're going to have schools, workplaces, and exercise professionals also getting in on the action as well. Seni Naupu is an Ireland Active Ambassador, and I'm delighted to say she is with us now. Seni, how are you getting on? Hi, Owen. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, thanks for having me on and look it's fantastic to be here to to launch national uh, fitness day for island active it's going to be such an awesome day in general so many free events around the communities across all of ireland for anyone to get involved across any age group any ability just get amongst get out of the house um, and get involved I'd also say that maybe a few of us over the last few months have become experts in being active. So hopefully uh, you stay active after the actual day itself on the 24th of September. Well, that's the thing. It seems like <laughs> a real opportune time to be talking about something like the National Fitness Day because we haven't had a lot of positives to talk about this year. But as a country, the statistics are showing that one of the few positives we do have to talk about is that Ireland is a more active place than it was before the pandemic. People have been getting out, they've been exercising, they've been trying new things. As you say, there's more experts in fitness this year than perhaps at any other recent time in Irish society. So it is something we can be proud of and it is something that we can capitalise on now. Absolutely. The positive things I've been seeing, and you've probably seen it yourself, is the increase in numbers from a social distance, which is super important, um, of people being active, out and about, using the infrastructure that was there and is there for a reason in terms of, you know, your, your bike lanes and wider footpaths and those sorts of things to encourage people to be active who might not necessarily enjoy team sports, mm -hmm. but also there's fantastic uh, facilities in place if you do enjoy you know your community team sports and those sorts of things there's a number of uh, dance clubs even if you want to uh, you know get your uh, TikTok dances a bit uh, <laughs> higher level um, I know a few mums and dads out there also into the <laughs> TikTok theme as well so plenty to be active um, with yeah, that's it. Maybe TikTok is actually the reason why everybody's just uh, exercising a little bit more this year. And it's 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 really good point you make that I mean, it's you're not stuck to a team environment as great as a team environment can be. People who live busy lives can exercise on their own now, and I guess there's a greater interest in it this year. Uh, Instead, we should get straight into the year that you've had. It's been a rather extraordinary few months uh, from your point of view. If you go back to the England game the injury you sustained in that game and what happened thereafter. So for people who don't know the story, for, for what's happened over the last few months, how have you spent uh, the few months after that England game at the Six Nations? Um, thanks for checking in and asking. I appreciate it. Honestly, I'm, I'm grand. Um, the last few months, five, six months, have been an ordeal for everyone, really. Um, I've been fortunate to... Um, have found something that's non injury related actually. So it wasn't quite an injury. Mm -hmm. uh, touch wood, I'm touching wood right now. Um, yeah, so it was something that was picked up during a match and um, very fortunate to have the experts and just strong support team around me in terms of, you know, Irish rugby medics and physios and uh, the very best in the vascular department of vascular surgery in St. Vincent's to excise something from the neck so everything is uh went to plan everything went to plan so honestly i'm grand i'm fine i'm very conscious very aware that there's many others out there perhaps waiting for surgery or in well worse off position than me that um you know there's 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 certainly much more worse things than uh, you know what what i went through which um something in itself but at the same time you know everyone has their own wee challenges that they've been going through over the last number of months whether there has been from a physical point of view or mental point of view very aware that different you know societies and departments in terms of different job sectors and those things people are suffering big time um, mm. and I'm really one of the things that I'm really passionate about and being part of this launch today and being an ambassador for Ireland Active is, is that one constant thing all of us can control is how we can incorporate physical activity into our lives uh, on a regular basis, making it part of your lifestyle from a mental health 
mm. into our being point of view. Um, and through all the challenges, maybe one of the constants was that we were able to stay active um, throughout this period, period, whether it's whether you live by yourself or with someone else or whatever your household looks like as a family, you know, staying active was probably one of the key constants right. throughout the last number of months. Um, and so, you know, when you speak about National Fitness Day on the 24th of September, we should all be experts by then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, I should have rephrased that last question. It, it, it wasn't a, an injury you sustained against England at all. As you said there, it was what you thought was an injury at the time until you find out it's something very different. Is that correct? Yeah, so it was a precautionary scan. So um, you always trust and respect the experts that, that uh, you know, uh, ensure that you get the precautionary scan, mm. which is exactly what it's there for. Yeah. <laughs> you found something. So we played to the experts in Sanctuary um, here in, in Dublin and the likes of Dr. John Ryan and, and our own RFU medics, um, Nick Cosgrove and Andy McDowell, and all, all of our team who uh, are excellent at what they do. Uh, and this is just an, another example of, thank God, we sort of got through it. And again, as I mentioned, very aware and conscious of those. And I'm thinking of those who are yet to get surgery or yet to be seen or who are going through their own sort of health problems um, at the moment. So, you know, I hope that they also get the support and help that they need too. Right. Uh, is it the case that most rugby players whenever they have an injury that requires a scan, it is a precautionary scan. And uh, I guess in very, very, very rare circumstances, does that precautionary scan ever actually result in the thing that you are being precautionary about? Uh, and in your case, they found a little tumour in the neck area. Uh, and no worries if you don't want to, to go into the details of all of this, but it just seems like an extraordinary story that after what you must have thought was a fairly routine check, that that ends up coming up as a result of an injury or as, as a result of a, a knock that you sustained in a rugby game, that there must have been such a strange feeling around that, knowing that because you were in that position, you managed to, to get it checked and to, to, to get it sorted immediately. Uh, and without that moment in the rugby match, you might not have found out about it for a little while longer. Yeah. Um, it certainly was. Uh, it's what they term as, uh, what, when I say they, I mean medical experts, term as an incidental finding. Um, I'm not the first as well, you know, there's other uh, players who for their own reasons choose not to highlight certain things and mm. they might have found, you know, might have experienced some incidental findings as well. So certainly it's, uh, you know, there's absolutely 100% no need to feel sorry for me, I'm grand. Um, but in terms of the awareness of the key um, messages for me around that situation which is a reminder around things happening for a reason uh, and in your own way however you want to interpret things um, the timing of it as well and the team we played against all of those things were you know aligned itself to be a blessing in disguise really the first time I've thanked England for uh, <laughs> after playing them and um, yeah it's, it was also just a bit of a um, just a humbling environment to be part of in terms of not just for me as an individual player, but just us as, um, I suppose, as one of the six nations to be part of a competition like that uh, because it was one of a very rare opportunity where you see the community come together and, you know, wish each other well off the pitch. And, you know, I had uh, highlighted it in a social media post I wrote put out there a while ago in terms of you know what the competition means in terms of not only the performance aspect and what it delivers from a spectator point of view and a player point of view union point of view but also from a friendship over rivalry point of view and that really is what the rugby community globally um, is all about and that's how it's sustained so just felt really humbled to to be in their company and again look it's not about <laughs> Me or the injury is just about the power of yeah. the community, the power of the rugby community. And then again, the power of the community, if we can come together and be active <laughs> for one day together and then keep it going. And that's what it's all about, the community. Yeah. And I think I speak for everyone in saying that it's fantastic to hear that you're doing so well and that mm. the recovery has been 
so quick, I guess. I mean, that, that, that you're in to a, a Six Nations squad once again for the remainder of this year and that, I guess, things seem to be going onwards and upwards for you personally. Like, it, I, it's hard to know whether or not a pandemic at that moment was the worst thing in the world or, or whether or not that pause button was the thing that you required at that time to actually just stay at home and to, to kind of consider what's just after happening. I, I'd just love to hear how, how those few weeks at the start when you're locked up at home and we're all locked up at home and after you've gone through such a, a big shock, I'd suspect, after that England game. Oh, thank you. Thanks for asking. Honestly, I appreciate you even yeah, considering those chicken questions. I honestly keep having on about um, there are other people well worse off than me. <laughs> you know, it certainly it was a yeah, it was a challenging time, you know, and I do acknowledge that and um, it was probably more challenging that I wasn't able to get home to New Zealand. Sure. Um, it's the third time. So we had our flights ready to go and it kept being pushed back. So to be honest, that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, but, you know, you learn to adapt and you get through different periods. And um, as a squad member as well at the time, we keep training and working away and those sorts of things. So I had other, you know, uh, thankful to have other projects and bits going on to almost distract myself um, from, uh, you know, thinking about it too much, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it, it's, I guess, probably the, the second time in your career where you've had a prolonged time off. I mean, I guess with rugby, there's this interesting thing where we talk about sabbaticals with a lot of great rugby players over the last few years where taking time off is necessary. I guess this is your, your second prolonged break from the game. I, I guess speaking from experience, how mentally refreshed did you come back to the game after your first break? And I guess... Oh, oh, and I'm so sorry. It actually paused oh, for, no. like, for like maybe 10 seconds. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll just rephrase there. It's just uh, having had your, your second break uh, yep. from rugby, essentially enforced this time, yeah. uh, obviously. Uh, like, is there a certain freshness that you come back to the game with? Does, it, does that freshness feel like it's in your head at the moment and that you're looking forward to getting back on the pitch right now? Absolutely. And I think that freshness entails a fresh perspective. Uh, mm. Not just for myself, but I imagine others as well depending on your outlook in life and your mindset and your motivations and what it is that you're wanting to achieve and things. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, really fortunate that uh, for something like a surgery, anyone else will know who's, who's experienced it. I was really fortunate to have been communicated the different scenarios. So for me, the key was how I mentally prepared before it and what was to be expected and how to reset my expectations from a personal point of view. Um, and then obviously priorities as to, for my role as a person, let alone as a player. And yourself will know that yourself in terms of performing around with the family and things like that. Um, so yeah, from a fresh perspective, absolutely. From a motivation point of view, I've never been more motivated. So our, obviously our focus from a rugby point of view is is on uh, December and how best we can prepare from a process focus point of view into our next camp. And before that, day by day, week by week, camps, those two games, whatever squad is selected for that, and then into the, the three games in December. Please God, they happen. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. When you say there, Sunny, that you spoke about different scenarios that were presented to you, could I ask you what were those different scenarios and how wide ranging were they? Uh, you're quite wide ranging. Look, like anyone who goes through something like that, it's it's going to be extreme one way or the other. But uh, look, we're really fortunate to have some of the best surgeons in the world in Ireland. Uh, really thankful, Dr. Joe Dado and the team of uh, registers there in the Department of Vascular Surgery just did their thing. What they were excellent at. Um, yeah, it was just yeah, it was, it was one of those things that. Um, like anything, there's always going to be consequences either way. Um, so this is the best case scenario. Um, I was actually, it was interesting in terms of the recovery after and something that I suppose uh, I'd like to highlight in that um, 
I had to learn and I'm still learning, you know, how to breathe again, how to walk and run and jog and get back into things. So, you know, that's actually something for something like National Active Day. Yeah. And if you're not involved in a team sport, you know, I had to walk. I had to, the success for me three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, sorry, was walking as fast as I could for two minutes. That was success for me, you know, for one of the days that I built up each day to the point where the week after I was able to jog and I was able to build the jog into a faster sprint, into 80%, 90, and to the point where I was able to complete sessions last week in our national camp. But that's all a process focused towards something. And anyone who, you know, might not really be motivated at the moment to be active. That's that's fine. Maybe you could find something to to aim for. It might be something as, you know, that wanting to cover a certain distance of a walking track or something. Um, but absolutely find something. Step up, get out of your house or whatever it is and get involved in something, get a goal and work towards it. And it literally is one foot in front of the other. Cindy, I must say that is absolutely remarkable. So three weeks ago, I didn't realise it was that recent. It was very much about get, getting up and running. And then last week you're doing full training sessions. That, that is, uh, I'd imagine for you personally, uh, I, I guess a huge milestone to be able to take part in these full sessions. But to go from that place to playing test rugby uh, uh, before the end of the year, like that, is, that is a remarkable story. I've still plenty to go though. I've still plenty sure. to go. Absolutely, yeah. So everything is abiding by our medical experts and physios and our coaches. So you know, this is all in complete respect and within the framework of what my post recovery was going to look like. Um, so thankfully, I'm on track for a safe return, and it's uh, we're cognizant to not rush it as well. So we're sensible around it. It's uh, but it's more for you know just from a personal contributing point of view to the squad and being able to be in the environment or be at a different voice. Um, that's probably been my most challenge. I'm, I'm an over communicator when it comes to being on the pitch and off the pitch too. But, um, you know, that's been a challenge in how I communicate differently, but as effective as it was. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, Sunny, we, we are out of time. There's, we, we, we should chat again before the end of the year. Chat, <laughs> chat some rugby and, and, and chat about uh, the, the upcoming games. As you say, fingers crossed, go ahead this year. But I think anybody listening will uh, understand what an incredible story it's been for you this year. Very best of luck with the rest of the recovery. And it's great to see you're doing so well. Oh, and thanks so much for your time to chat. And I appreciate that. And I hope you're keeping well. Cheers, Annie.